Hello everyone and welcome back. It's been a couple of weeks since I filmed anything on the guest house. A lot of things were going on and the main thing was I was waiting for windows and doors and all the doors and windows except for one window arrived today. I haven't even cleaned up in here because I've been waiting till I can cut the uh, house wrap off over the door opening. I have it all closed up so no critters get in here. We've had skunks been eating up with the cats up by the back door. <laughs> yeah, we had a bear that was on the back porch. Uh, I just want to keep everything out. So once I get this stuff cut open, I can toss everything right out the back into the junk pile. Most of it anyway. Some of it's still good. But we will go through setting windows, show you the proper way to do it. Again, there are several proper ways to do it, depending on what you have as a house wrap or, you know, different stuff. But I'll show you the most generally accepted way and talk about a couple of other things you can do if you're, like this is new construction. What about if you're replacing a window in your own house? You got siding hitting against the window and everything. So we'll talk about a few of those things. Well, generally, when you put the house wrap on, you'll just run it right through the windows and leave it there so that no, you know, uh, rain, nothing can get in while you're waiting for the windows. And there, the window is supposed to go against the house wrap on the outside. So what we usually do is come in like this, right in the corner, cut at a 45, roughly. I can actually leave the top, I'll show you that. We want the three sides like this so I can wrap them inside. And by code, they want that wrapped in. Doesn't have to stick into the room. I'll take this off. On the top, and this, and now this is a flanged window. So it's pretty much the same with one that has brick mold, but uh, we're doing flanged right now. So the top, what we'll just do is cut that straight off flush. Just like that. And now what I'm gonna do is just wrap this around. Give it a few tacks to hold it in there. And I don't need this sticking inside, so I'm just gonna take, the other ones don't. Gonna take and cut that right off. I can see that the camera is going to be difficult because it's kind of dark in here and light outside and it doesn't know what to do. A lot of times when we're doing windows they'll send out a piece of cedar siding. You know it goes from about an eighth almost nothing to three eighths to a half inch on this side and we will put a piece of siding on here before we put the window in here. And that actually should go underneath this house wrap and it should go down on there. The reason being, if any water does come down and hits the sill, it will run outside. But you can get around that by just taking your sill, if you don't have any of that, and hitting it up on the bottom. Just to get it to slope away. Normally if you're doing that and you're gonna get this inspected, they're gonna want you to put a little shim in here to hold it, I'm not worried about it. These windows do not come all the way inside. Like if they already had a two by six extension jam on them, they would come all the way in. There would be a like a flat part on the window, so some of the window weight would hit here and could actually push this down. These windows only come in, you know, a couple of inches. So all the weight's out here. I'm not worried about it. I'm just gonna leave it like this. There's a little bit of slope on it. You're past what code needs it to do. Out here now we have cut this flush and what we're going to do is cut this back like so and then peel this up. Because what I want to happen is once the window will go against here, it will go against here and once that's done this will go over the top of the flange. 
You would do the same even with brick mold, but with brick mold, you're going to have a piece of drip cap above it, and then this would go over the drip cap. So you, this would end up getting cut a little bit shorter, but we don't have to worry about that right now. It's also good to go ahead and take and tack this up or you're going to be fighting it. Just want to give you a close-up view of what I've done here. Once we get the house wrap cut like we have it now, we're ready to put on the bottom sill, which uh, this is flex wrap. Depending on what store you're at, they're going to have a different brand name. You want to get this put on the bottom. It creates a pan on the bottom with no seams, so any water that leaks inside can run out. You know, uh, years ago they had a lot of trouble with the windows leaking. And for two years, I had a crew, sometimes two crews, that were going through and doing these insurance jobs, replacing the windows in the houses. You would not believe how rotted those houses got. Uh, most of them were stucco on the outside. There was big court battles that went back and forth. And, and they just, they were making the houses too tight, and they weren't putting air exchangers in them. Because like I've talked about in previous uh, episodes of this, we're going to create like a plastic bag inside the house. Everything's going to be tight. Well, when they put those windows, we would put them in on the outside, and we had to wrap them back then, and we wrapped them per manufacturer what they wanted done, which wasn't what we're doing right now. It's really weird how it has changed throughout the years. It did for a few years, I should say, and then boom, kind of went to the industry, industry standard. And I, we had a house, I never, never remember, forget that people's last name was Path. It was the worst one I ever saw. We built the house five years prior. And you can tell, like, if you go down the road and you see a stucco house, and on the outside in the corner of the windows, going down the window, there'll be like a brown stain. And, you know, just because, like, where the water runs. And you could just tell that, that uh, the windows are leaking inside. And... It ended up being that a lot of them, the stucco, they didn't use like double 30 pound felt or whatever they were supposed to do. I don't know. There was, we don't want to be here all day. But they would come in then with a company and these were big houses. We're talking always, you know, two story, three story full in the back because it had the walkout and the big, you know, pitched roofs and everything and the whole house stucco. And then the stucco company would come in, first they'd come in and cut out of the corners of the windows. They would be cutting out in the sheetrock inside to check the studs. And sure enough, it would be rotted. So the stucco company would come out and tear the stucco off. They would, they would just cut big squares and pull them off. The whole house would be um, uh, scaffolded up. And they'd come in and pull it all off. And then we would come in and, re and tear all of the windows out of the house and then replace them all with brand new windows wrapped. And we'd have to fix the sheathing, everything, and then wrap them the correct way. And you know, after that, you do not see, up here in Minnesota, you do not see very many stucco houses anymore. Um, I've seen stucco people come out and repair, like some houses will be stucco in the front from back in the 80s or 90s. But uh, you do not see a stucco house that often at all here. So anyway, but the, the path house, we had built that house brand new five years ago. And we came in there, and I never forget up on that second story in the master bedroom, there was one wall that was really bad, and it was finally like, let's just tear all of the sheetrock off on the inside. And it was rotted so bad that there were some studs that only had about three quarters of an inch of stud right here that was not rotted. All of this, you could just push your hand right through it. And I mean, the stucco was basically holding the outside up, because when they pulled it, at that time we were using usually built right for the sheathing, it wasn't this plat, this OSB, and that was just flake off, come right off with the uh, stucco. But I mean, beforehand though, we would cut the sheet off just to see what was going on because there was so much moisture and you could just push your fingers through it. So then what we'd have to do is, is put a beam underneath the, the trusses or underneath the sheetrock on the inside, yank the whole entire wall, rebuild the whole wall, you know, sheet it. So you can see where this got into be, you know, a house like that, it might have been $100,000 or probably more than that, just in the insurance job to do it. So 
then they kind of got serious about wrapping windows and, and air infiltration into the house and they had to put in the uh, air exchangers and everything. You really don't have that much trouble when you're putting on like vinyl siding or even a wood siding because the house can breathe better. I mean vinyl siding, it, it makes the water go away but you know there's weep holes underneath and, and this house wrap breathes so the whole house can breathe, not on the inside, but outward. Um, so they just don't have that trouble anymore with, uh, you know, even with wood siding, it can still go through and come back and forth. But through that whole entire process, eventually this is what we have to do to put in windows. And like I said, this is, I, I'm using flex wrap. There's other kind of brand names, but what you want to do is get this stuff. And these are just old rolls. This stuff is expensive. So when we would do windows on a job, I would definitely grab the rest of the roll and put it in my truck, and now I've got them in my workshop, and <laughs> it saves you some money. So what you want to do is you want to have this come up on the sides, good six, eight inches. So I'm going to roll this across. I'm just going to guess out here. I don't care if you're up a foot. It doesn't matter. You have to be able to create a pan on the bottom. And then on the back of this, you can see that it peels off, and this is real sticky. In fact, my guys normally would not let me do this part because you cut it and you put it in and I would always screw up because if it touches itself, once this is off, it's done. You gotta cut a new one. You cannot get it apart, especially on a hot day. So anyway, we're gonna peel this back off. Part of the back off. And then we are gonna set it if I can do this without screwing it up. Just kind of center it. You want it to come in. You know, I have it pretty much to the inside of the sill. It doesn't have to be perfect. Get it into that corner like so. Leave this one so I can work over here. And then we're just gonna push it down in like this. And then get it up against the side. You can get this stuff to look kind of pretty, but not super pretty. So now you can see what I've got right here. Well, now that I've got this set like this, we can go ahead and we're going to peel off this other paper that's on the back. Otherwise, you can't really get anything to move. Normally I do not screw it up at this point, but you just never know. So I'm just gonna peel this off. I'm trying to get that camera so it shows it good. I think this is good. Now that that's off, I can take and flex wrap, push it down, just like this, and get it to push against your house wrap. We're gonna do that on both sides. You probably get some kinks in it, it doesn't matter. You see how beautiful that looks? It's created a whole entire pan on the bottom. And it's weird because for a while when they were figuring stuff out, I can't remember if it was Anderson or we used to put in a lot of Norco windows, Marvin windows. They actually came with a plastic piece that would fit on the bottom that was all just molded plastic. And that didn't last very long, but then they come up with stuff like this. For a while, we had to put, like it would go here and here, but then we would cut it, you know, so it would be open here because you couldn't flex it. And then we would have to put a piece up inside of here and then there was caulking that had to go in there. Sometimes we even had to have an inspector come out and inspect one of the windows prior to putting it in so they knew we were doing it right. It was a real pain in the butt. But if you notice, when windows leak, usually the rotted part is below the window. Well here now, any water that comes down here, it can't go anywhere. Everything is solid, no seams. My sill is at an angle so water can run out and it will then go over the house wrap and run down and house wrap is kind of like tar paper on your roof. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's better than just going against say, you know, built right or OSB or dens glass, whatever kind of sheathing you have on the house. 
And this is a perfect example of what I mean. If this would have had the pan in there going up the side, and then we're gonna, you know, we're gonna put the window in, but we're gonna have window wrap that's gonna go here, which you would see, which is gonna overlap onto this. There's no way this can happen. Everything would have ran outside of the house wrap and just ran out the bottom of the wall. Well, the next thing is the actual install of the window. And that's gonna take me about 10 minutes to do, but Melissa should be calling me any time on her ride home from work. So we'll come back to this after that and we'll get this thing installed, show you how to wrap it, and then we're gonna talk about a couple of other things as far as different kind of installations. And then you can just watch me do this over and over again on this house and you'll pick it up by the time I'm done. I think we're gonna come back to this tomorrow. Melissa just got home, but it's almost seven o'clock. She had to stop and do a Walmart pickup and we got everything inside and everything. I think I'll start this in the morning, which kind of sucks because today it got to 70 and tomorrow's high is something like 57 or something. <laughs> Weather's changing. Good morning, everybody. Sounds like we're gonna have some spotty rain off and on today. I wanted to get out here and get on these windows. So let's get this first one put in. The first thing I did after I took the plastic off this window is I opened it up and I removed the screen. You want to get rid of that screen right away, I'll put this inside in a corner. I'll actually, once I get all the windows in, I'll put them in the workshop where they're safe. Because I'll guarantee you, somewhere along the line, you're going to ruin the screen. And usually we don't put those back in until the job is pretty much done because you could be doing anything and scratch that screen and then you've got to get it fixed. Well now we're almost ready to set the window but we have to run a bead of caulking for the window to push against and we're going to do that on both sides and we're going to do it on the top but we're not going to do it on the bottom. So I like to use clear silicone. Anything will work but if you use a clear silicone especially with bigger windows, sometimes it can get messy trying to get them in the hole and get them lined up. And if you are putting in a white window and you're using brown caulking, you're probably gonna get some on the outside of the window or worse yet on the inside of the window. We just wanna do it like that. A nice continuous bead so no water can get behind the window. What used to happen when the houses were so tight, the pressure was different outside from inside and it would actually suck the moisture around the window behind it and into the house. So this, when they come up with all this stuff, and then I usually put some right here in this corner just to, I don't know why. I think at one time that was code but we don't want to put any on the bottom. And the reason why is if any water does get, like say it got on the sill, however, through the top, whatever, and this is sloped so it can come out, but it wouldn't be able to come out because there is a bead of caulking here. So then everything is dammed up inside again. So nothing on the bottom, just on the three sides. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to pop the window in the hole and if you're doing this yourself you know you want to get it centered so you can get uh, foam insulation or even fiberglass insulation in there but you can just slide it back and forth and pretty much guess and you'll be close enough like that. Windows are easier with two people. Uh, uh, actually, with something like this, you'd almost need three because if the windows have extension jams already on them that go all the way inside, it's easier to deal with as far as centering and leveling on the inside. With these kind of windows, you have to level on the outside. But the nice thing with these is this is a single hung window, so only this side opens, the top doesn't. So with this unit being completely fastened in there, you're as square as you're going to get if 
If this is level, this is level down here. Where if it's a double hung or a slider window where both of them slide side to side, you can move that window. So then usually I'll come in and we'll level the bottom first, then go ahead and do the side, put one nail in it, and then we'll square it corner to corner. That's super important. If you ever have to go to court because of a window that doesn't work, if that window isn't square, you're screwed. Because you can, you could have this window a half inch out of level and a half inch out of level here. As long as it's square, it will work per manufacturer's specifications. Square is important. Here, I can't do anything. I mean, I can maybe jog it a little bit, but I'm not doing anything because this is not moving up here. It has been set by the factory. So now that I've got it centered, I'm just going to go ahead and level it. And I can see that my top has to go towards the door. So the first thing I'm going to do is nail this bottom corner because I know that can just stay in one place. And then I'm going to go ahead and level this. These windows are kind of nice because that siding can go behind here without having a channel on it. And that these windows, are they the best windows? No. They're, they're a good, they have like three, good, better, and best. These are better. Uh, if I would have got the best window for this brand name, and this just happens to be the brand name that the store I got them from had, and they're very common, um, they would have been more than double. So... You know, money doesn't grow on trees, so people can say, why wouldn't you put the very best window in? I, who, I'm not going to afford that, <laughs> you know? So I just, these windows will be absolutely fine. They pass all the uh, energy code and everything. So now I'm going to level it this way. And when I nail these in, I'm using a roofing nail. I happen to have two inch because that is what was in the workshop. Inch and a half would be fine. I tell my guys at work if they're nailing these, you know, if you hit the window, you'll crack it sometimes, especially if it's cold. I tell them to hold on to that nail the whole time in and sacrifice your finger before you sacrifice the window. pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and double check on the bottom. That looks pretty good. Actually, yeah, it looks really good. You got to be careful with these because this little nub will hang down and this little nub might not hang down as much. So really look at that, like when I put my level here, I can see that I've got a little more of a gap here than over here, so I slid that over. And then I'm pretty dang right on with the level. Another important thing to do, depending on what kind of window, this one I have really no control over, but if this is a slider, I don't have the center style. And if it's a bigger window, you sight the side because almost always they're going to bow out and you want to get that in so your window slides correctly or shuts correctly and you know if you're going to put what if I was going to put a trim board around the whole window if it's bowed out it's, it's just not right so you always sight the window this one there's nothing I can do I am not going to be able to move this at all but generally you would always sight the sides Now that the window is set, you have to put a nail in every single slot. No skipping over one. Every hole gets filled.
Now that we have this window all nailed off, it's fully installed, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back with my caulking gun and along this seam I'm going to run a bead of caulking. And now this isn't required with on every one of the directions that you see, but I actually went to a window installation. I wouldn't call it a school, it was a day thing. and. So you could be a certified window installer and you're trying to go above and beyond. Some do require this, but we want to do this again only on the top and the two sides. It's just an added layer of protection so water can't suck in through there. And then what we're going to do is every single nail and that slot that it fits in, you're going to do this to make sure it's covered in caulking or clear silicone, whatever you're using. I also like to take and do this seam also. And on the bottom now, even though we didn't put caulking on the inside of it, behind it, we're going to do the nail. Once we have this done, now we can pull this and take and run that back over the top of our window, like so. And now some windows, you have to put a drip cap on top of them, which is just a little piece of, I don't have a pencil on me, I was looking for it yesterday, I don't know where I did with it. It's just a piece of metal that goes like this and like this and like this, a little piece of aluminum that fits over the top. This unit here, I don't see any reason, I mean they even have the slot for me to put my uh, siding down inside of there, so it would kind of, since you don't have to put a J channel around this if you don't want to, I don't want to have a piece of J channel sitting up here when I, you know, one piece of J channel and nothing else around the window, you'd have to do the whole thing. So you look at your manufacturing thing and see if they want that, it's also hard to find uh, drip cap if you're going to a big box store like I can't remember which one has it and which one doesn't and a lumberyard will have it but um, anyway we're not going to put it on these windows I they will go above the door because the doors have brick mold on them they do not have flanges but uh, I would never put that on anyway until it's time to do the siding because then you're right up there you can get everything sealed in really good as you're doing it so but for this um, application on the windows, I'm not going to use drip cap. Now I'm going to measure my window, which is 42. So I'm going to cut 50 inch pieces there and, I don't know, 30. And for the sides and the top, we're going to use a, this is a window wrap, it's just a four inch that goes around the three sides of the window. So it's easier to cut this, the initial cut, do it first. And this again is some stuff that's really sticky. So I have better luck with that than I do with the bottom of it. Sometimes it's a pain in the butt to get this to start undoing, but 
So what we're going to do with this, oh, this stuff is so sticky. Stay above your window a few inches. You want to get it to cover your flange. And do not wear good clothes when you're doing this, because no matter how good you are, you're going to get stuff all over the place. And then you're going to wipe it on your pants. We're going to go just like this. And you want to do this the same day that you did your caulking, because otherwise, then you can push it down flat. Otherwise, you might get mounds of caulking here, and then when it comes time to side, put the siding on and everything, you don't really have a smooth surface to work with. Push that in there good. And do that on the other side also. We're going to do the same thing on the top. So there you go. That's a properly installed legal window. If you're putting a new window into like existing construction where you pull the siding back or whatever it is that you do, I then, and it doesn't have window wrap on the house already, um, I will then take and put a piece of the window wrap like when everything's open and framed to the right size if you had to do any adjustments, I will put a piece of this window wrap against the sheathing, built right, you know, um, OSB, plywood, whatever it is, and then go ahead and do my window install, you know, put the beta cocking and everything, and then there'll be another layer that will go against that. And this way, if you ever do reside the house, they will come and put window wrap on there, and it'll still attach to this, but you have that barrier behind it also. So that's how I, I tackle that problem and never have any trouble with any inspectors or anything like that. If you have to, if you're pulling a big area open, then you could go ahead and put a piece of window wrap and cut it, but mainly you're trying to keep it as small as possible. Well, let's say that you're gonna re be replacing your window, your house is all sided, it's sided right up against here. What do I do in that situation? And what you can do is just pull the siding back wherever you need it and then do your window or whatever. But you're going to have to be doing some, you know, does the siding that we have now, if it's masonite or something, does the grain match? Can you get the same stuff, you know, the same color, whatever? Uh, you know, it's different if it's vinyl or something versus wood, if you're going to have to paint it. So what I will usually do then is normally the window itself will have a brick mold on it. And let's see, what's a brick mold? This is a brick mold, a piece of wood here that goes around the window or the door, and then you'll nail or screw through here to put it in. Nowadays, most everything is flanges, but back in the day, almost everything was a brick mold. Sometimes they would wrap it with aluminum, sometimes it's just sitting there that's wood, you know, that's painted. So what I do is I, if it's a flanged window, I will cut back about two inches, cut around the whole thing so I can get at that flange, pull the nails. If it's a brick mold, you'll just pull the brick mold off. 
and there was enough room to put your new window in, which is probably flanged, but your window is gonna be back here, away from your old siding. So let's just pretend that this is the edge of the new window once it's gonna go in and I have this cut back two inches so I could access it and do my work. What then I suggest people do, because normally if you're not replacing every window in the house, or maybe you are doing every window in the house, it's just one side of the house that got rotted away, you know, the window is because of the weather and you are replacing one or two windows, whatever is on that side. So then what we usually do is say this is the window. Then I say, okay, well now let's wrap this with a piece of trim. So all you've got to paint is the trim. You don't have to paint anything in here. And then once I get that window in and I'm cut back two inches or whatever, then say this is a this is five and a half, could be four inch, whatever. I just take that trim up, the new trim that's gonna go around there, slap it up against the window, mark this, cut all this out, and then I can just fit a piece of this in there that goes all the way around and you've got a wrapped window and then you're only having to paint this. You don't have to go and try to match everything. If this is off a shade or two from your original color, you're really not gonna notice it versus a piece of siding here. And then there's a one here and here where you're really gonna see the difference. So that's normally how we do um, a window replacement if we're just you know replacing the whole entire window. Well, I'm gonna run in and take a shower. There's a few things I gotta do and then we're gonna get back out here and install some more windows. Well, it's about 20 after 5 now, so my day started out as I'm going to do windows all day and then took a shower and then we went out to eat and went to the fruit truck and picked up fruit for Melissa to do some more canning and making jam and yeah, now here I am. Ah, when we get a little bit wider window, like that one was so narrow, uh, if you level the sill first, like this one here, I can see that this side is a little bit higher than this side. And then I'll know that this is a good side to tack first. And then when I move the window, you know, it more than likely it'll be out of level and have to go this way and that'll pick this end up a little bit. But if I nail this side first, guessing, um, there's, nowhere, there's no way to go that way. So it's really, really close, but it definitely, maybe a sixteenth of an inch higher on this side than this side.
I guess we never did talk, I might just think of it as being a, a sill wrap or a flex wrap, but this stuff here is, it measures nine and a half inches, so I'm either nine or, it's probably nine inch. And this works good for two by six walls, but if it was a two by four wall, it would just wrap down farther, it wouldn't be a big deal. When you're doing this also, try to get it right on that edge because you'd be surprised, you know, your window sticks inside the hole a quarter to three eighths of an inch. So that's a quarter to three eighths that your flange is not going onto your wall. With this window being a slider versus a double or the ones we have, a single hung, which means a single hung, only one will go up and down, double hung, this one will go up, this one will go down. This is only like, I don't know if they call it a single slider because only one side moves, this one is stationary. So again, I checked it for square, but there's really nothing I can do with it when I tried to move it because it was like a 16th off, nothing I can do. but. That side we can't do anything with, but this side can move. So we definitely want to sight this first so you're not like this or like this. And this one is perfectly straight. So I will then put a nail right in the middle so nothing changes. And then nail it all off. When I'm nailing off windows, I like to take smaller tabs to get it in because if you know you can drive these in in two, if you catch this edge, it's going to snap it right off. Especially on a very cold day, you have to even be careful when you like have the window sitting on the ground and you move them, it'll snap this flange off. And then you're sitting there putting it back up in there and cocking it really, really good so nobody can see it.
So this window here is a little bit weird. I have a feeling that you can maybe pull these screws and then this piece pops out. No, there's a bead of cocking in here. I mean, it fits in there tight. So I'm just gonna drill holes. This will get no wrap after the fact. This is like a brick mold one going against, but everything's plastic. So I'm gonna drill holes, three on each side for screws. And uh, the thing is on the bottom, it doesn't, it hangs down only about a quarter of an inch onto the wall. So I will have to, I will end up sealing that up because, well, I guess I could do it with the siding, but it's really weird underneath here. It's not really super flat. It's going to be, there's going to be a lot of caulking in there when it gets sided. So, but anyway, we'll get it in there. And I guess in a case like this, you just make sure that it's waterproof. I guess water might not be able to get out, but it's not supposed to get in. So make sure it doesn't get in. When you're putting in a crank out window like this, you know, I'm doing this from the outside. I'll do my little centering thing and you can watch this gap right here. This is a pretty small window to get out of square, but you can tell, I mean, if this gets tight, and this is open, and this is tight, you know that it's out of square and it has to go back. So on a window like this, we'll set the bottom level, and then we'll put the two bottom screws in. And then you just look at it, and if you make sure that this is the same, that window will open and close just fine. And it should, you should be able to level, level, or square it. But at the same time, looking at this is the most important thing because that is telling you how that window is going to work. You can't have a window that's going to start to shut and then hit down here. You know, then it's never going to shut tight without kind of it being a drag getting it in. It's just not put in right. So for this window, since it's not going to get sided before winter, I'm going to take and run a bead of caulking, a small one, right down here on the sides. And then on the top, this one will need drip cap. So what I'm going to do, I don't have any drip cap right now, so I'm going to take a piece of the window wrap and like make my own little piece of drip cap that will come on to it a little bit, just for an extra measure until it does get sided. You can see right there what I did. Don't know if you can see that top, but I just bent it around so it kind of creates a drip cap. And I ran a solid bead of caulking around, across that whole bottom.
Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Now you know the proper way to install a window. I have two more windows here. One of them goes into the guest house right there, kind of above those doors. And the other one is the one that we just put the 4x4 window in, the last one. And at first we we're going to do a 4x3, and that window is going to go over here into Melissa's part of the workshop. But not only am I running out of daylight here, the camera picks up more light than there actually is. It'd be smarter for me to put these doors in before that window or I'm going to have to be moving everything twice. I will see you guys on the next video.